Today, we are going to be looking at chapter 21 of Genesis chapter 21. And we are going to, we're doing this so that we can understand who God is, what's his purpose for our lives, what are we supposed to be doing. If you have any sort of difficulty in this COVID time or any time in your life, there goes my new book, um, this is the place you want to spend. I watched a woman take an envelope and for an hour and a half, she made it into a useless junk journal. So instead of doing that, spend an hour and a half with me and let's understand what God is all about. So tonight, we finished one book. Genesis 1 took us all the way to chapter 20. And I've got our new book. This is, we're going on to chapter 21 so you know how we do it i will start reading this is soka so karen and i'm bringing you it real and live let's open and pray lord heavenly father bless this to our bodies bless it to our minds bless this to our soul help us to understand you better help us to walk closer in you know what it is you're trying to do in us and through us in jesus name we pray amen okay i want to give a shout out to my friend izzy who sent me some comments she gives some definition check out the, the chapter one and chapter two first day she read she, she looked at the video and um she gave some some definition and she also referred us to uh east sword east sword is a free online for bibles and for bible dictionaries so if you have any difficulty you can look at east sword and Check out their, their Bibles. So you have no excuse. You have a Bible now on Esau and a Bible dictionary. So let's jump into chapter um today, day 23. This is 23. We gotta keep this one close at hand because you know how we like to refer back. Well, not us, eh, but God. So today, day 23, chapter 21 of Genesis. Okay, I kind of fallen back. Me, 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 me. Um, y'all gotta gotta write me. And let me know whether or not you're interested in this. I gotta keep doing it because I wanna know about God. But you know, in terms of video taping it and, and putting it online, um, you, let me see if I can get a little bit of the sun out of it. Yeah, you gotta you, you gotta let me know what's going on. Okay, and the Lord visited Sarah as He had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born to him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God has made me to laugh. So that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children stock? For I have born, born him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Therefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this born woman and her son. For the son of this born woman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And this thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy born woman. In all that Sarah has said unto thee, hark unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also of the son of the born woman shall I make a nation, because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered into the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle and she carried the child under one of the shrubs. When she, and she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad and the angel of the Lord God 
call to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad which he, where he is. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thy hand, for I have made him a great nation. And God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. And the Lord was with the lad and he grew and dwelled in the wilderness and became an archer. And he dwelled in the wilderness of Paran. And his mother took him a wife of the, the land of Egypt. And it came to pass at that time that Abelek and Pichol, the cap chief captain of his host, spoke unto Abraham, saying, God is with thee in all that thou dost. Now therefore swear unto me whereby God that thou wilt not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son. But according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me, do unto the land wherein thou hast sojourned. And Abram said, I will swear. And Abram reproved Abelech because of a well of water, which Abelech's servant had violently taken away. And Abelech said, I would not who has done this thing. Neither did you tell me, neither yet heard I of it, but today. And Abram took sheep and ox and gave them unto Abelech, and both of them made a covenant. And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. And Abelech said unto Abraham, What mean these seven ewe lambs which thou hast set by themselves? And he said, For these seven ewe lambs shall thou take off my hand, that they may be a witness unto me that I have dug, I have dug this well. Therefore he called that place Beersheba, because where they there they saw both of them. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba that Abbe, then Abelelech rose up and peach out the chief captain of his host and they returned unto the land of the Philistines. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and there and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistine land many days. End of chapter 21. Okay, so the Lord visited Sarah. Okay. So, um, so this is verse one. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said. Remember when he said that? He said it twice. Okay. He said it in. Let me eat it to think. He told Abraham a whole year before that he was coming. And let's get, let, let's get it. Let's get it. Okay. Wow. Open right on the page. Chapter 17, verse 21. Sarah shall bear unto thee at this, at this set time in the next year. Okay. So he, he said unto Bill, he, as he has said, visit. God said it twice. Okay. One, it was in chapter 17, verse 21. Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. So this is exactly nine months from the set time. The Lord visited her. Okay? Yeah. So exactly nine months from set time, the Lord visited. I like how they use you that visited. It is immaculate conception. Visited. And I don't think so, eh? Okay. Um, okay. So, 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 it was said there, and it was also said in chapter, chapter 18, chapter 18, verse 10. Sarah, thy, thy, thy wife shall have a son. Okay, so that's the second time. Chapter 18, verse 10. Sarah, thy wife shall have a son. Okay? So, that we have. Um, 
all the families of the earth will be blessed into you. I'll give you this land. I will make your dust, your seed, your seed as the dust of the earth. We get into the chapter 13, verse 16 here. Um, okay. And boy, you see? Wait, I don't know where I'm looking for, right? I don't know. I don't know. Ah, right. Get to know what I'm about to give up. Don't ever give up. Verse 2. Verse 2 in chapter 15. Verse 2. Abram said, What will thou give me seeing I go child left? Right. So let's start it. So let's, let's start talking it. What God says he's going to do, he's going to do. So what's the first thing God said? God said, He will have a seed. Now, chapter 12, verse 6, have seed. And chapter 13, verse um, 15, a seed will be blessed forever. Look how long we, we're talking about. Eh? He, Abraham was like 75 years old. Okay, then we have in chapter 13, verse 16, he wouldn't be able to concede, can't concede, I have to tell you how much, and then chapter 14, verse 14, lots of births, lots of births in his house. In his house, none to him. And then that same what chapter is in here? Chapter 15, verse 2. Abraham is saying, Eliezer of the Marcus. No, um, he said. I go childless. I go childless. So he's still without child, and Elizabeth of the Marcus is my heir. Okay? And God said in verse 4 of that chapter 15, Elisha shall not be thy heir. Verse 4, Elisha shall not be thy heir. Okay, so he that's in verse 4, he that come out thy womb, he that come out not thy womb, thy bowel, out thy bowel, thy bowel shall be thy heir. So we're tracking the whole thing. And then, what were they doing? Okay, so we go, and then of course, you know, they went and they do this sleep and they be a grand thing. And, and we go, look, God is so good. We find it this one time, chapter 16, verse 2. Walk into my hand, maiden. So let me, let me keep, let me keep going. Chapter 16, verse 2, because we want to track this thing. Sarah said, Sarai said, Go in unto my maid. Right? And then he hearkened unto the voice, and, the, and then Sarah took Haggad and right, Haggad thinks. So, okay, so we bring it, we, 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 we come up to the speed here. So, look how long it took for God to, and I, you know, he, he had son. I, I, what was his son's name? Ishmael. Ishmael, okay? So now we reach all the way that we go to now, this chapter, this chapter 21, verse 2. Look how, look how long it takes us to get here. Okay? Sarah conceived. Sarah, con Sarah conceives. And bear 
Abraham, look to if there is something in your life, in his old age. Okay? He was, let's jump down to verse 5. He was a hundred years old. Okay? So, if there is something, when he started, he was 20, he was 75 years old. Okay, it took 25 years for God to fulfill a promise that he was, he did not ask God for it. I don't know, he didn't verbally, we didn't, nothing said he verbally asked God for it. God came and volunteered, I will give you, and it took him 25 years. So, if you have something you're still asking for, keep asking of it. And look at this. It was to at the set time of which God had spoken to him. God probably had a set time. I don't think Abraham had a set time, but I think God had it. Okay, so we're still in verse 2. Verse 2. At the set time. God has a set time, an appointed time for everything. It might take 25 years. At the third time of which God has spoken to him. It's almost saying like I told you the time, but you were listening. You know, God had spoken to him at the third time of which God had spoken to him. Okay? So, I'm not going to verse 3. Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, that whom Sarah bore him, Isaac. Okay, so we know who named him Isaac. Remember? He was told to name him Isaac, right? We're going to go back. We're not, so if we don't go back now, we'll go back later. Um, that same time when, when they were in the, play, in the kitchen, she was told to laugh in his heart, pleasure. Thing. Then he said, a woman bearing child, and I will certainly remember, she denied she lied. The thing said, yes, she lied. I mean, yes, she laughed, but she was afraid, afraid. Oh, when did I tell him the name? Maybe it was before. I should have a, a, a son. Yeah. But where was the name? Was the name? Did I didn't write it down? Um, oh, but where were we told that he will have a name? To me, I, I thought I gave the name already. Oops. Sorry. Okay, again, I don't want to keep you all back, but if I don't know where, where anything should play, I got, should, should play email. I hate when I didn't write something down. Three men look by him, so by the ten door. Okay, so, I, I didn't write it down. My bad. Okay, so the name, but I feel like they got name already. Um, verse four. Okay, verse 4 is the circumcision. He circumcised them. Remember who told him to do that? Circumcised at eight days. Okay? Maybe I'll find the things on that part. But that was, um, that was when he went and he took all the men and he circumcised. Right. Verse, chapter 17, verse 24. That was the commandment then. Chapter 17, verse 24. Well, it, it began. Ah, look at that name there. But my 21. Um, But my covenant will I establish with Isaac. Okay, Sarah, I not call her name. She's the mother. Turn on his face. Charlie uh, uh, right, 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 verse 19. 
I tell you, God wants the double, the double check in. Chapter 17, verse 19, when God said, Thou shalt call his name Isaac. Thou shalt call his name Isaac. So God is keeping our division there. And then the whole circumcision was, I will establish my covenant. The child ain't even born yet. This is three months before she even gets pregnant with him for an everlasting, and God already put in him in an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after that. Okay, the woman doing the, the um, envelope will be somewhere where she pulling the napkin apart. And then she's taking glue and she's sticking the, the, the napkin glue all over the place. And I tell you, I couldn't stop looking because I, I, I wanted to see what was the end result of this whole thing. She has something like about 400 and something. Some of them have millions of views looking at napkin being made into useless junk journal. Oh, they good. they good. Let me learn something from God. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac. Right. Which Sarah shall bear. He, 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 he doing this at the end. Uh, this is chapter 17. Chapter 17. I'm calling in some things here. Verse 21. Sarah shall bear. Shall bear. At set time. I like, you see that set time thing? A set time in the next year. You know what God is trying to show us here? When God says something, He do, He do, mince words. No, that was me point. That was me thing. I, I made that one up. Um, God have His set time, and He have when He's going to start. He has when He's going to finish. We are the ones who rush the whole thing. Okay, but that was me point here. I want you to try and find the circumcision part. So he tell him to circumcise. Why did he say circumcise? Okay, verse 14. And the uncircumcised man's flesh. Okay, verse 13. Okay, sorry. It's starting from all um, chapter 17, verse 11 to... You shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. This shall be a token of a covenant between you and me. Token of covenant. That is what circumcision is all about. It between Abraham's seed and God's seed. Okay. So we're going back now to chapter 21. Let's go back now. Let's see if we can do it. Jet, okay, so he was circumcised at eight days old as God has commanded him. So I want you to get that. You see that Abraham? That's why God liked Abraham, you know. He did what God commanded. As God had commanded him. So remember he took the man one time. He circumcised himself and all males over eight days one time including strangers imagine you just a visitor there and you get circumcised um so we saw that in verse 17 right there 21 21 but, but 24 chapter 17 verse 24 to 27 we saw he obeyed one time and here in this chapter 4 i mean chapter 8 21 verse 4 he doing it to isaac obey he was obedient if, if you could do anything in life strive to be obedient to god i'm not good at it but 
pupili mo na pala yun. Hindi, may gasset yun dun eh. But, oh God. Okay. And we did, we already said that Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born on him. And Sarah said, look what Sarah laughed. God loved Sarah. I was thinking God was had me thinking about who Sarah was. I mean, Sarah must have been one pretty woman. Sarah, because you know the Bible tells her she was very fair. Okay? But a Pharaoh, very desirable, apparently. Because a Pharaoh wanted her. And a king. And a king. Okay? And then God seemed to have a little soft spot for, for, for Sarah. And why I say that is because he he came to her defense twice and he recompensed her. Well, recompense it went to Abraham, but it was for her. He recompensed on behalf of her twice and he reproved her name. Remember? And nobody could say ill about her. Remember that part? I don't know if you missed that, but we'll go back because that is the, it, it wasn't too long ago. Okay, and he closed up. The room in, in Abilamech Abel Kingdom. So I think all of that equal to me saying God has a little soft spot for this. Okay, then, then he said, um, Behold, the, all of this is in verse 20. Um, Verse 20, let, let's say um, 14. He gave sheep up, man, servant, blah, 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 to his thing. He restored Sarah's wife. He said, Behold, I learned and before me, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. He shall be a covering unto the eyes, unto all that are with thee and with all others. Thus she was reproved. I know what I'm saying, you know. I pay attention. I don't know what I'm paying attention. But I pay attention. So verse 14 to 16, in that same chapter 20, when he, he, he the, and then verse 18, in that chapter 20, is when he reopened the womb of the house of Abelalek because of Sarah Abraham's wife. So that Sarah woman ain't easy. Okay, and we're gonna see later on as we know, we're gonna see where he um he listened to her again. Okay. Um, let's see. Where is it? Where is it? So I said, God has made me to laugh. Um so we get in trouble last time. Sarah so said, God has made me to laugh. Remember when, when she laughed? I know you don't want to go back, but it's all right. We don't have to go back. Look, at least stop with that. We have to go back. We have no choice. And I mean, actually, you know what? I like the going back. Um, that was like, where will we, where will we that? We are the door of the house. No, no. I do not think the crazy family. Make sure you have all where will we? Let's go back quickly. Um, okay. Where I laugh not. That whole laughing thing. Where she laughed? She laughed first. Wherefore did Sarah laugh? First of all, she laughed to herself. Chapter 18, verse 12. She laughed to herself. Then in where? In verse 13. The same chapter 18, 
Kiat, buang istirahatlah. Saya di Angel. And then, Sarah say, in verse 15, then chapter 18, I didn't laugh. And then, that's them. That them chapter 15, the angel said, Nay, but you did laugh. Okay? I know we know this whole thing. Okay, and then they'll leave. So now we reach back in this now. Chapter 21. And Sarah laughed again. God made me to laugh. That's very interesting. Made me to laugh. So now she's laughing for a reason. Okay? She is laughing a different kind of laugh. The first time she laughed, she laughed out of fear. She did say that. They said that she, for she was afraid. Okay, that is chapter 18 verse. Out of fear. Okay. This time, second time, she laughed out of joy. Oh, you can imagine. If he's 100, she's 91. And she is. So that all that here will laugh with me. Oh, Lord, that is so much. So that all that here. God likes to Sarah individually. Not, I had a question on that. And this is cool. This is the answer to that question. I will answer it myself when I get the time. But God had a little special relationship with Sarah. Okay. And she said, who would have who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given child suck? For I am born him a son in his old age. And you know the answer to that. Look at that uh, question. Sarah said. Who, and we can stop right there, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah, we know who should have given children suck. Okay, we know who. Who, who, where we got tell her, is there anything too hard for God? Remember that same thing. Is there verse 14? Who? God. And then we can say, verse, that's chapter 18, verse 14. Is there anything? What was he saying? Is there anything too hard for God? That was the question that was asked. So even for the Lord. So even though they were told a whole month, she still had some the unbelief. Okay, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah would have taken? But God, God said it. God said it. God said it 25 years earlier. And one year earlier. Okay, so God said it. And then we switch. So what the lessons for this? Lesson is we gotta believe. The lesson to two. That lesson two. God is able to say 
and do the impossible. Okay, so right around now, she's looking for all kind of old paper with coffee stain on it and writing and funny thing and she's using funny nice cutting scissors like that. Well, we 40, 40 minutes, yeah. And, and they're still sitting down there with their mouth open wondering what's going on right here. Okay, so we're in verse 8, chapter 21. She saw it. The child grew, so the child grew and was weaned. I don't know, some people say they, they suck until three years, four years, whatever. Okay? And Abraham made a great feast. He's still a very wealthy man. The child, let's go back, child. The child being Isaac grew and was weaned. Okay? Abraham made feasts. Well, it could be a, 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 make, a, a feast for weaning, a great feast for the weaning. So it may be the big thing, okay? Remember, Abraham had had wealth. So you could imagine it, it would have been, you know, a big, a, a big feast. Something really, really big. Now, if a child about one year, two years, three years, he must be playing with if child one or two or three years old must know his brother Ishmael and they must have played together okay also we, we kind of fill in any details that's the whole purpose of this exercise it's for us to fill in the details so the child is there the child is weaned but the child will be a little toddler or whatever running around and little toddlers like to play. Ishmael would have been about 13. Okay, we can know the age because we were told the age Ishmael was when, 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 when Abraham was 86 years old when Ishmael was born, right? We can find the age. Ishmael was 13 years old when he was circumcised. Ishmael would have been around 14 years. And how we know that is because he was 13 years old. Ishmael was 13 years old. Verse chapter 17, verse 18. He was 13 years when circumcised. And why is that important? Because he was 13 years old when he promised the year before, when the promise was given. Okay? And when promise given um year earlier. Okay? So now here in chapter in chapter nine so in chapter 21 verse 9 he will be 14. okay right so we know Ishmael is 14. Abraham and and also we know that Abraham had him at 86. And Abraham now a hundred. Okay. So Abraham is 14. This little boy. Wait. No. No, no, no. I'm wrong. He would have been 14 when he was born. Isaac born. But now, how old is he at the weaning? Now at weaning, how old is he? 
Anybody get the idea? Ishmael is because you're not gonna win the baby like three months. And I don't know. I don't think so. I think they use a thing called Dr. Who. Somebody look that up. See if you can leave comments for me. Okay. So, but anyway, we don't know the age of the baby. We, so we don't know the age of the women. Don't know Ishmael age. Isaac is Isaac H at women don't know Ishmael H. Okay, so we need to find out these two. Okay, two questions. So that is, you have, you have any questions for today? No, like question one and question two. All right, so I keep going. Um, John Doe and 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 Sarah saw the son of Agad the Egyptian. Now I want you to, to, to stop and analyze this. Yeah, one. So this is verse nineteen. Sarah saw. So she, she wasn't so she saw with her own eye, not told. You know, because in those kind of households, you know, things. And then look at this. Son of Haggad. Didn't call him by name. Did not refer to him by name. Nor that, that he was also son of Abraham. So here, Sarah didn't see Abraham's son, eh? She saw Hagar's son. And then, look at the next piece, the Egyptian. Now, let me tell you something, eh? I don't know if they are white Egyptians, but most Egyptians dark skin. And I think, I think, Remember and now see. Remember when we started to do the Sarah thing? Sarah was very fair. Sarah was light skinned. I think we had a little bit of some racial discrimination going on here. I'll be the first. I will say racial discrimination. And this will be question three. Was the color of haggard skin a problem for fear, Sarah? Do we have, I mean, I know she's a maid, so there's some class, <laughs> okay? But she's not only maid, so, so there's some class. So some class discrimination, okay? But we also know that she is now Abraham's second wife. Even God mentioned her as being wife. Okay? And mother of his first child, first son. Okay, so she, she has some, even though there was still some well, is there still class discrimination? So let me ask that question, number four, based on those. Will there still be class discrimination? Because if, if I started off being your maid, but then I become your husband's second wife, I, I may not have the same level as you but i'm no longer made i'm a wife now okay so let's see uh when she saw when she born unto abraham okay the son of she born to abraham mocking okay let me keep something mocking what could mock what could this boy be doing he at least 14 years old 
He was 40 when his brother born. Okay. Um, so we go to nine cell, eh? What? I mean, what could he be doing? Let me ask that a question. That's that question five. What could Ishmael be doing to mock? Okay, that's the more question. But you know, you, you can also understand Ishmael, okay? He had one and they're making a big feast and, um, you know, making a big fuss over him. Everybody must have been invited from the neighborhood. Um, so we're still in verse 9. One could understand. Let's spend some time thinking about Ishmael. Ishmael. Okay, could understand Ishmael's feeling. Okay, one, mother was a maid, Egyptian, so dark skin. If they have light skin Egyptians, let me know. Um, okay, three, Sarah stopped liking her. And I saw Sarah showing a bad face. Okay, four. Um, mother tried to run away. But he would not have been born yet. So he don't know when pregnant. Five, sent back. By in, sent back by angel. Let's kind of fill it in. Six. Um, so she had him. Um, he was father's only child for 13 years. So he was your favorite, right? Your father only child. And 13 years is an age of, of reasoning, favorite age of understanding, right? So you and your father's only child for 13 years. Then he, the father tried to push him forward. Tried to push him forward, saying, you know, bless him for blessing, but was rejected, right? Okay. And then you have now, you have the angels come, came last year. And your penis get cut. Well, you get circumcised. Okay, so. It hasn't been easy. And now, um, brother born. New favorite. Because you can imagine how Sarah must be getting on. I know Abraham gets it on. So they the new favorite. So now we are seeing number nine, a great weaning feast. And you ignored. So he's a 14 year old, maybe 15, 16, we don't know. He might he might have felt very um you know. I could see him mocking. I could see him mocking. Um, you know, not, yeah, mocking. If you say mocking, because whatever he does, you think. Okay, so let's go on. So, verse 10. Therefore, she said unto Abraham. So, Sarah again. Um, Cast out this bond woman and her son. She takes that mocking so serious. Cast out that, oh, look we answer, born woman. She's not your wife, she's still a born woman. Hmm. 
correct the answer to yes there is still class discrimination correct the answer to four answer four yes sarah called her born woman in verse what is that 10 in verse 10 so yes there's still class them thing discrimination born woman so so far we see there's more class discrimination than race discrimination but anyway um and so far No, so she's not a wife. And her son, not his son, but her son. It might be a cultural thing to wear. So if we know it to be a cultural thing, educate us. For the son of this born woman ooh, shall not be heir with my son. No wonder the boy mocking. Even with Isaac. Ooh. No wonder. You can imagine how hard her life must have been with that Sarah. She done pretty. She knows she pretty. She's the first wife. She quite likes she. I mean, you can imagine how she whew, must have been a force to be reckoned with. The boy was must, must have been jealous. Okay. And then we go into verse 11. And the thing, and the thing, what thing? I'm not a thing, I'm more than a thing. I mean, the casting out. That's what they call it when you think you're casting, casting out, they're calling it a thing. And the thing was very grievous, very, very, it wasn't as grievous, it was very grievous in Abraham's sight. Now, Abraham is a fair man, a just man in, in thing. God said Abraham was a just man. Remember, even when God was walking, let me tell you where God said this. Shall I? Um, God said, shall I hide this thing? No, that's not what he said. He said, you become a great and mighty nation and all the world shall be blessed with him. Oh, right, yes, verse 19. He said, For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they will keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. So Abraham was, so this is chapter 18, verse 19. Abraham did, did, justice and judgment so you know this is not a man who you know take pleasure in doing wrong and here they're saying grieving okay and why grieving because of his son he liked the boy he liked the boy remember he know this boy now only son for last 14 plus years okay he liked boy, the boy okay so he must have gone to god because we hear and he said god said to abraham so we get from that abraham went to god it was so grievous. And this is God answering. Okay, and God said, 
let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad. Let it not be grievous. This is for somebody out there. Somebody, they believe this message. Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad. And <laughs> and because hear the word God use of thy not the born woman thy born woman why God calling her born woman himself okay why God calling I have some question okay mom this is for somebody else. I get hung up on the fact that God called woman a born woman himself okay what the message here don't worry don't worry i know you concern about your son and one woman but we have a, a question five. Is this five? Yes, five. Question six. Why is God referring to Haggad as Abram's born woman and not? his wife because god call her we gotta go back god call me his wife god called her his wife um somewhere somewhere god called her his wife Okay, because it, okay, I have to find that God did call refer to him as thy wife. Okay, I'm, I'm, of course, I hate when I can't go back. Um, okay, but he said, In all that Sarah has said unto thee, oh, this is so annoying to me. Ugh. We're still in verse. We're still in verse 12. In chapter 21, verse 12. In all that Sarah, oh, the Sarah has said unto thee. God favors Sarah. why question seven why why does god favor sarah he does not answer me yeah, but i hope he does okay um hearken unto her voice listen to your wife no man should hear that even when she's doing wrong it's not that Listen to wife, even when she is ill, advising you. Oh, question it. Should a man listen to his wife even when the uh, it is second time the advice is wrong this is the second time second time sarah's advice wrong 
You know the first time Haggard, sleep with Haggard? Um, there's another time when she, her uh, advice wasn't, well, it wasn't really advice, but when she was acting up my words, eh? and she said, it is between me and, and you, be, you know, for God, and he said, do with her whatever you want, but I guess that's not a thing. Okay, so I'll cast Haggard. That's not ready. Okay, so let's keep going. Verse 13. Verse 13. Okay, no, we still, we still in verse 12. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. We were told this already, right? Um, this was I that was all the, 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 the point in time. Shall I shall have a son, a lion? It says I still call. Oh, oh, oh. Amen. Okay, no, that would have been like the first time. You know when he was trying to say, oh. He, um, when he was trying to say that would have been in verse um, 400. Or oh, the thing I was talking to about before, when Sarah dealt hard with Haggad, Haggad fled before Sarah. That's uh, verse chapter 16, verse 6, in case somebody wants to write it down. Um, where, 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 Okay, in case you want to write down um, when Abraham was six, 86 years old, when, when he had Haggad, I mean Ishmael, that was in chapter 16, verse 16. Okay, let me write that in. Okay, but I am looking... I am looking for for, for, for when um, God talk about um, oh king shall come out of the I see that after the everlasting covenant he said it will be done change his name and thank every man child thank whatever my covenant shall have birth um So, oh, it was in chapter eight, chapter seventeen, chapter seventeen, verse eighteen. Um, that that is okay. Chapter seventeen, verse eighteen. Ishmael, not Ishmael. Um, Abraham tried. To put forth forward Ishmael. And he said, Oh, he used the word, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Right? And then God answered, God answered, um, he will make him fruitful and make him 12 kings and everything else. But God was basically saying, no, let, let's go to it because chapter 17, verse 18. Chapter 17, verse 18. Oh, that, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son. Um, indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him and with an everlasting um, covenant and with his seed after him. So, so it was, it, it was the covenant. So, so that is chapter 17, verse 19. It what support what we have is chapter 17, verse 19. Um, Covenant with Ishmael 
I mean Isaac, Isaac, sorry, Isaac, and his seed. Okay? So, this verse 12, when God is saying, in chapter 21, verse 12, when God is saying, for in Isaac thy seed be called. God had already said that in chapter 17. In verse 18, he said, Ishmael, known after Ishmael. And then in 19, he said, yes, with Isaac. So I just given you the support in, for, for that. So we're going on to verse 12, 13. And also of the sons of the bondwoman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. So, also the son of bondwoman. Make nation. But he said that already, because he is thy. Thy meaning Abraham's seed. So God acknowledged. Not that he never say see, see. So, so we go. Uh, this is the really verse for that. Um, said chapter seventeen. Okay, that's in verse twenty. Chapter seventeen, verse twenty. God said. As for Ishmael, I have heard thee, meaning I understand what you're asking for. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve prince will, shall he begat, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish in Isaac. Okay, so he's clear. Well, I don't know it's clever. We need to have support. Okay. And in verse 14, the same chapter 21, verse 14, and Abraham rose up early in the morning. Oh, God, he likes to do things early in the morning. When did we see him rise up early in the morning? We saw him rise up early in the morning when he went to look for Lot. Okay, uh, other times. Okay. Right, so he rose up early in the morning, took bread. This must be so hard for this guy, yeah? And a bottle of water. My gosh. And give it, it must be a package, because it's a food bread and a Boston water, so it must be a package, because it's it and not them. Give it on to Haggad. Try not to be the second wife, or the third wife, or anything. Putting, he himself putting it. This is verse 14, chapter 21. We're still in putting it, it, a package, on her shoulder. And the child. So the boy was still a child. 14 years plus a lad. And sent her away oh must have been hard okay and then I like this part and she departed remember how long she wanted to go wanted to go since pregnant oh boy and she departed and wandered in the wilderness, wow, of Beersheba. Oh, oh, that was tough. Didn't know where to go in.
because she remember she was from a, um, she was from Egypt. I wonder how far Egypt was from Bethsheba. If anybody know that kind of mapping and thing, I have never been able to do too well. Um, and the water was spent in the bottle. I get them to my son in my eye. And the water was spent. Let you drink out holy water. Verse 15. Drink out all the water. I mean, she must have been wondering her thing. Okay. And then she she cast the child they keep referring to him as a child under one of the shrubs so that shade you know um i don't i don't know what to make of all of this shade so she put them in the shade and went and she went and sat her down over against him a good way off. And by the tell you, as it were a bow shot. So a good distance away. However, for a bow, it will take to shoot a bow to the arrow. However, for that thing, that could be some good little, you know, yards. You know, when they're doing it in the Olympics and they're doing, well, the archery and that kind of thing. I don't know what the average will be, but it could be a good little while we are off. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. I don't know why they keep using child. Like if to get at our sympathy, you know, make him song a lot younger. I mean, whatever happening to him, bad. But they keep calling him child, child, child. When you use the word child, you think of somebody younger, you know. I think. And she sat over against him, lift up. So she expected him to die. I guess from thirst. It takes days for people to die from thirst. Eh? Let me not see. And, and, and she sat over against him. And lift up her voice and wept. Okay, let me tell you something. Eh? How many mothers out there? Your man put you out with the child, give you a bottle of water and a bread, and send you into the wilderness, and you're wondering. What would you do in this situation as a mother? I don't think I could sit far off and watch my child die. I I don't think I could I could take a stone and hit him in the head and kill him myself. But I don't think that is such a funny thing that if my child die and I want to be there holding the hand and telling him it's gonna be okay and giving him support. First of all, I think I'm gonna fight. Okay, first of all, one, my man put me up. I mean, like, hey, that's the best thing you could ever do for me. <laughs> no, I'm mean, okay. Your mom put you out. Okay. What are you going to do? Head to the nearest town. To nearest village. Okay? Because you lived there for 14 years or even longer. You must know 
you know, the Jeff Gubais over there, and the Tamarais over there, and the Mikarais over here. And the I head into one of them, and I am like, you already think I'm a bond woman? I head into the nearest village, and I, I beg it. Okay, that's number two. Number two, that's number one. Number two, if this is my thing, this boy is, this boy is 14. That's a big man. Oh, tending to be a big man. I was going to put him to work. To help me. To help me find a way out. Okay? First of all, I ain't holding no bread and I ain't holding no water on my shoulder. Think about it. I want you to think about it. You know, they calling him the child, the child, with a 14 year old. Okay. Then, number three, when the water finish, we going and find some. I'm not wondering. I never been in the desert, but you live there for 40. First of all, what kind of cold hearted man is Abraham with all that camel and donkey and he ass and she ass and all kind of thing like that? That he can't give the woman a camel. Oh, oh. Why didn't Abraham give them two camels? Or two asses. I mean, come on. He had all of that. Okay. Then, okay, so you didn't get anything. So the water finished. And then, I'm not leaving you to die alone. I'll put you in the shade. I will put you in the shade. But I'm sitting by you. Why are you going to let your child die alone under the bush? I mean, let's be practical. I don't, I don't know. The, okay, I definitely want to be balling. Six. She takes long to ball. To weep. I would have started... crying from the time you put the, the, the bottle on my shoulder okay I find it just sounds so and also that number seven for me if God said nations will come from him, then I won't expect him to die. That's me. Okay, but I don't know if she was told that. Anyway, so so she put the challenge thing and then okay. So it's 17. Chapter 21, verse 17. And God heard the voice of the lad. So the lad, the lad was crying. Heard the voice of the lad. So he was just crying. But the lad, he was, he was calling out. I don't know if he's crying, he said to the voice. Okay, and then we say, and the angel, so this is proof that God has angels. 
that if you wanted any proof that God had angels, angels of the Lord called. So this is a three-way conversation. The boy calling out, the, the angel called to her God. So she gone and sit quite oh, quite oh, away, called called to her God out of heaven. <laughs> I wonder what that sounds like, out of heaven. She's sitting far away. Okay. And said unto her, What is this, Hagar? Oh my God, they ask some questions here. What is this? What is What is it, thee? There's a lesson here, Hagar. Okay. This is a lesson two so far. This is lesson three. Um God asks you. God asks you to tell him what is specifically your request because what ailed the haggard they know what ailing her ain't nobody ain't know what ailing her they know what ailing her what ailed the haggard let me get back to Fear not. For God has heard. So don't be afraid. And why? Because God has heard the voice of the lad. Okay, so he doesn't call him child, not child, he's a lad. You see, God called him lad before, where he is. So the boy is calling out to God under the shrubs. Isn't that nice? That's nice. He's calling out to God. But I don't know if he's crying. They don't tell us, didn't tell us if he's crying. Maybe he's just talking to God. You know what I mean? No, I don't know. But maybe he's just talking to God. He thinks he's about to die. He, or maybe he's saying, please help us, please help us, please help us, please help us. Maybe he's not crying like, ah! Maybe he's like appealing to God or whatever. I um, don't think. Okay, so God heard the boy's voice. I mean, God could hear her, God, God could hear the boy, God could hear everybody. Okay, and then we have verse 18. Arise, do something. Right, do something, get up. Do you understand God has told us to arise? Then he tell Abraham to arise. He tell you know, how many times have God used the word arise? Question three. Question nine. No, I'm trying to go to the question three. It's question nine. Check how many times God use arise. How many times God begin by saying arise? We must check that. I'll check that thing. So he said arise. Where is it? We still in verse 18. Lift up the lad. Maybe he lie now. And God, I just tell you that. 
Lift up the Lord. Lying down. And hold. Him. In thy. Hand. Your mother. Your parents. God. God had to tell her to behave like a parent. I tell you that I, I didn't even remember this. But in my child. I don't go to the cross from you because I don't want to see you to die. I don't want you to die by yourself. I think that is that is worse. I don't want to see you die, but I don't want to see you die by yourself even more. Okay. Um for I will make him a great nation. That was number seven for me. God said the nations will come up from, from him. Okay. For I will make, maybe this is the first time she's hearing this, a great nation. No, no, no. When the, the angel, after the angel came up and when she was running away, um, the, I saw the angel, I told her, uh, um, I'm saying again, she said, okay, be in verse 16. Return, verse 9, in chapter 16, verse 9, and the angel said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her heart. And the angel said to her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, verse 6, 11, Behold, thou art a child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because his, the Lord has heard thy affliction. Verse 12, And he will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man, and his, every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spoke unto her, uh, Thou God seest me, for she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Remember that happened in the well. Oh, okay. Okay, so she didn't tell him. She he didn't tell her outrightly. So let's put it in chapter. This is chapter 16, verses. From eight, um, whoa, 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 whoa. from verse ten, verse ten, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly; it shall not be most numbered. Verses ten to twelve. I will. I'll agree. They did not explicitly say that. Ishmael will be a great nation. I think it was Abraham who that was told that. Abraham was told that, not her that. Okay. So um let's get back to thing. And God opened her eyes, verse 19. Verse 19. God opened her eyes. So her eyes were closed. I pray that God opened her eyes. Because. So you know something? God opened her eyes. So her eyes were closed. And she saw. A well of water. Right? She saw a well of water, which means it had to be within within sight. Which she couldn't see before. Couldn't see before. Okay? And she went, so she got up, so she arise. So you gotta do what God tell you to do.
she arrived, she went and filled the bottle that was empty with water, okay, and gave the lad drink. Oh my God. I guess maybe, and then she probably, probably held him in her arms. Like how God tell her to do. So one was saying, and two was to hold him in. And verse 20, God was with the lad. Oh, God was with lad. And look how, and he grew. And he must and dwelled in the wilderness. Remember, we just read that whole thing uh, about verse chapter, ch chapter 16, verses, verse, verse 12. You gotta go back. You gotta stop soon, and then you will check out for the next half of this. You'll, you'll, you'll check out the next video of this. He will be a wild man. Verse 12. A wild man. So he looked at that. He grew up in the wilderness. A wild man. And it's well, right? And, and what else happened here? And became an archer. It's not so funny that they use the bow, the bow, the bow shot as to say the distance. It's ironic that they used a bow shot in verse where, where she went to sit away from him. A bow shot in verse 16 to describe distance and he became an archer um, and he dwelled in the wilderness of thing dwelled in wilderness of Paran right and married an Egyptian wife. Okay, so he was half Egyptian, half Hebrew, because God called um, Abraham a Hebrew, and then he married Egyptian. You said the mother went back to her people his mother's people. So his children would be three quarter Egyptian and whatever he and his wife part Hebrew and if the wife had anything, if his wife had another race. I don't know if she was in a she was a hundred percent Egyptian. Okay, so that's where we leave it off. We leave it off at verse 21. So we'll pick it back up. So we finish at chapter 21 verse 21. We'll pick it back up in the next video at at there. Father God Great information, great information. It took us one hour and 37, nine minutes, which is exactly the amount of time. I think it was one hour and 37 minutes that woman took a useless envelope and made it into equally useless, less beautiful junk journal. And in that time, we get to see the insight. She got a junk journal, we get the insight into you and what happened as we traced it all along. Father God, continue to bless us with your presence. Some of these things I'm remembering, I just never knew before. 
but it's your Holy Spirit that's bringing it back to me. And whoever, the sound of my voice that is hearing this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of his blood, I command all sickness, all diseases, all weapons, everything that is not of God to release you and release your household and bring you back into a place of enlightenment and peace and good health. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Goodbye, so can I see you soon.